beautiful people of the internet. Hope you're all going well. Today we have jumped back onto the VY Calais drift car, skid car, drift car, burnout car, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're actually going to do some more serious mods to this thing today, two in fact, and this will be the last sort of round of mods we do to this car um, before we um, take it to Calder Park for that drift day. We're also going to do a couple more co little cosmetic things and just a couple of little maintenance items as well. Just in preparation, the event is less than two weeks away. Um, so, and this is sort of the last day I'm going to have between now and then to get some stuff done. So I've got the whole day put aside. We're going to get as much done on this thing today and I'll show you what we're starting with. Alrighty guys, so today we're going to start getting serious about this thing. Um, the first mod that we're going to do to this car is hands down the most expensive single modification that we're going to be doing to this car since I've got it and all the work we've done to it. And it's going to take this car from just being something crappy to something still crappy. Um, and that is we're basically going to fit a half cage. So I've ordered this half cage uh, probably about six weeks ago. It is through AGI roll cages. They are up in New South Wales. Uh, these guys did a fantastic job, knocked the thing out fairly quickly. The reason why I want to put a half cage in it, A, is safety. So if something happens, if there's a rollover for whatever reason, it's, it's as unlikely as it is, uh, it's going to keep us safe. Uh, B, um, there are a couple more things that you can do when you are drifting on the track. If you have a half cage, like you can take passengers and you can also do tandem drifting. You can't do those things if you do not have a half cage as a minimum. Um, Q, I've forgotten what we're up to. Um, it's going to give me the ability to run a harness. I've got these harness mounts uh, that go on the rear bar. Um, so that's that's going to be good as well because I do plan on running a harness. I have got one on order. Whether it arrives in time or not is another question. Um, so yeah, basically that's it. Now, the AGI do do a, roll, a half cage, um, sort of like a, a generic vanilla cookie cutter. One, you can order it through their website. It suits VS to VZ, I believe. They're all pretty much similar. Um, if you just order like a standard off-the-shelf cage, it just has the one diagonal crossbar. Uh, but because I've got OCD, I chose to tick the box to get the second crossbar. Um, plus, it looks better, and it's also got these cool gussets. I also ticked the box to get these harness mounts as well. As I said before, I do plan on running a harness. They do not come standard. You can just get harnesses that loop around the bar, but it's, I like to have the option of doing clip-ons. So that's that as well. So basically we're gonna get the Calais forward. We're gonna set it up sort of in this area, jack it up and get the back wheels off because the rear mounts for the cage do go through the rear wheel arches. The front ones just go through the floor. Um, and yeah, I'll show you what we're doing. Now to give me a hand with this today, I've got my nephew Isaac here. Internet, Isaac, Isaac, this is internet. Um, so yeah, he's actually come down from Queensland. He's um, spending a bit of time with us So yeah, he's gonna give me a hand putting this thing in so yeah, we'll get the thing set up and we'll get into it Cool beans. So I've got it all set up on the jack stand back wheels are off as you can see First things first that we need to do is go through and remove the back seat So with putting this half cage in you do need to delete the back seat Look you, you can sort of this part will go back in with the cage in no problem um, but the the back bar does sort of run straight through where the back backrest of the back seat goes. You could chop out the foam, but I'm not planning on taking back seat passengers. Um, this cage weighs around 25 kilos, just as a, at a guess. So I'll try and make up for that by removing some weight from the back seat. Uh, we'll probably delete the rear seat belts as well because we're not going to need them. Um, and so the the front plates for the cage sort of mount around this area and as i said the rear ones mount on the rear wheel arches um so i need to remove a section of the rear carpet to make room for those plates i may need to remove these trims um, but i'm not really sure if i will i'll try and work around it if i do you just unclip this and there's another one for the front door there's some torx head screws in through here and there's another screw in through here and you can just sort of get that out but i'm not sure we'll need to we'll figure it out together i've never done one of these before so yeah let's get into that
Alrighty, so we've got a fair bit of stuff stripped out of the back. As you can see, obviously the back seat is out. We took all the rear seat belts out as well. Um, the rear one, to get the retractor out, you've actually got to remove the parcel shelf. So I ended up just pulling the belt out and cutting it, but the rear ones have been fully removed. I pulled the seat pillar trims back to get to the retractor bolts and I've just refitted the seat pillar trims. I sort of like having some interior, so I don't want to go removing too much if I can. Um, so I even took out the little latch for the center seat. So that's basically that. Um, I think we might need to take off these bits of insulation as well. I'm not really sure about that just yet, but we will see. So what we might do now is sort of sit the cage in there um, and just sort of see what we need to remove and where we need to cut for the plates and stuff like that. Something like that type scenario. Might have to Just go a little bit. it in there for a now. That's fine. And then I'll pass you this one. So a bit of an update. So obviously cage is back out, it's just chilling over there. Um, got the carpet, underlay and sand deadening all removed from the floor on both sides. Um, same deal for the wheel arch mounts where the plates are gonna go for there. They're all cut out and clearanced. We've given this just a, like a really quick clean, but we'll clean it properly once the whole job is done. And we've also taken the rear wheel liner, uh, rear guard liners out, sorry. Um, so we can put the, the plates in underneath the the wheel artist for the rear cage mount. So we're basically gonna go through, sit the cage back in there. Um, we're gonna get the bolts, these four bolts sort of all through on both sides just loosely. So the cage is sort of the shape that it needs to be. And we'll go through and start marking things to start drilling holes. You just use the holes in the plates as a guide. We use the 10 mil drill bit to drill them out as per the destructions. So yeah, we'll go through and sort of keep going, I guess. Sweet, so it's back in, sitting down in the clearances that we made got a bit more clearance to the headlining now as well obviously it's sitting lower it's all still really loose so what we're going to start with now is by drilling the holes for the wheel arch mounts get the bolts in get that loose once they're done we'll do the bottoms down here as well we've already gone through and put all of the bolts in for the sleeves so they're just loose so yeah we just get everything drilled everything sort of sitting in there and then we'll go through and tighten everything up so we're about half bolted in the rear mounts are in and tight. So those ones are done. Put the plate on underneath there. Could probably go through and put the rear wheel arch liners on. Uh, I've got this side all drilled and the bolts are just sitting through there loose. Little trick with this though, couldn't drill this one from the inside. So I did the other two, put the plate on and then I drilled that one from underneath. Still got to drill that one, put the bolts through. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll just keep going and once it's finished, I'll give you the final look. Sweet as guys, so the cage is officially finished. That's what the finished result looks like. Everything is all tightened up. Those eight bolts, four on each side are done. These two are done. Four plates are in. Did have to get a bit creative because the inner guard liner was hitting the bolts. So just did the old heat it up with the blowtorch and reshape it does stick down a bit. I just hope when we do suspension, it doesn't rub on it, but I'm sure the bump stop would come first before that does. This is how it looks from the front. It's actually looking a bit race car-ish in here now. It's 
So yeah, that's that. I like it. Righty guys, so as I said here, yeah, the cage is done. Isaac's just in there giving things a bit of a clean and stuff like that. He's a good kitty. Uh, so next thing we're gonna do while we've got the car on stands is we're gonna start doing suspension. I was gonna get this thing set up on the hoist, but I figured most of you guys probably don't have a hoist. So I just wanna show you how you go through when doing front and rear suspension on the ground. So we'll start with the rear, obviously, because the back is up. So we're gonna do springs and shocks all around. This car has already had a whole heap of suspension and steering work done. If you haven't seen the previous videos, please do so. The majority of the bushes have been replaced. It's got better, uh, thicker sway bar in the rear, upgraded sway bar links front and back. So all that's basically left is springs and shocks. Um, stiffening up the suspension on a car will help it slide better. Um, and then we can also, once it's all done, go through and rejig the alignment a bit more. So suspension wise, what we're doing is this. So I just wanna go through and explain this to you guys quickly, what we're doing. Rear shocks, I actually bought these for previous project quite a while ago, I can't exactly remember what it was, uh, but they are to suit VT, VX, VY sedan. They are the Pedders Track Rider shocks. They are brand new, but I have had them for a while, but never been used. These springs are the springs that we took out of the back of my silver Commodore wagon. In a recent video that we did, um, you would have seen that I lifted the rear slightly, and these springs had a airbag helper in them which we've removed obviously so we're going to go through and use them and these are the front struts complete new front strut track rider shock Pedder's gray spring uh, new bump stops dust boots urethane uh, top mount um, new bearing everything on the, on these are new Pedder's did not sponsor this video I paid for this myself whereas this was carryover stuff the reason why I'm going Pedder's gray springs Pedder's gray are I guess you can call it they're a budget range of spring that petters do. The red springs are of a slightly better quality, but the reason why I went the greys is for a couple of reasons. Ride height on this is gonna be about five mil lower than what the my the front of my Commodore station wagon is. Um, I, the, there is a petters red spring that goes about 15 mil lower, um, but I just think it's gonna be too low, as in I won't be able to get the car on and off the car trailer if we go that low according to the measurements I've done. So these will go about five mil lower, but also these have a higher spring rate. So the spring rate of these are about 15% more than what the Pedder's Reds are, which means they are about 15% firmer, which is what I'm going for. I wanna try and get the thing a, a bit firm, short of spending the money on adjustable coilovers where I've got that option. Similar, the rear springs as well are also about 15% firmer than what you would find in a sedan because these are a wagon spring. So wagon springs will have a slightly higher spring rate than the sedans. So that uh, accompanied with the track rider shocks should give me the feel that I want from the car and hopefully we will get a, a good ride height out of it as well and it sits level. By the math I've done, it should, um, but we won't know till we get it in there. So we'll go through, we'll start with the rear. We'll get that all blown apart and get this stuff installed. And then we'll drop it down, jack up the front and do the front. The magic of internet, the before measurement is on the rear, how I normally measure it, again, straight through the center of the wheel, up to the wheel arch. We're looking at around 695, 698. And on the front, we're at about 685. To get the rear suspension apart on these things is actually pretty simple. So you can see the old crusty springs and Munro GT shocks in there that have been there since I think they were, put, were installed when Moses parted the Red Sea. So it's just one bolt down here on the bottom of the shock. I think it's 21 mil or 22 mil for memory. Uh, you remove that and then you can knock this out. I do recommend putting a jack under the lower arm because there is a recess on the shock that sits inside the lower arm. So you knock that out. The top mount for the shock absorber is just inside this cap here. So you just remove that cap and um, yeah, there, there's a nut on there. You can get a buddy, AKA family, to hold the shock absorber while you undo that nut. Um, alternatively, there is a flat on the top of the nut that you can hold with a shifter while you undo the nut. And then to get the spring out, this, this is gonna be pretty debatable with what I'm about to say. Um, how I do it is I normally just get someone to stand on here. If you've got someone, stand on the, on the hub, and then you can get a pry bar and pry the spring out. It's not the proper way to do it. You are technically supposed to loosen the sway bar and in some instances also the lower control arm bolts, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna pry it out. Well, that's what I'm gonna try and do. Worst comes to worst, I will undo the sway bar. 
but I'll put the GoPro on time lapse and yeah, you'll be able to see it for yourself. And all done. I only bothered about time lapsing one side and I did have to undo the sway bar mount. Because this thing has an aftermarket sway bar in it and I've got it set on the firmer setting, it shortens the link essentially. So there wasn't enough droop in the lower control arm to push down on the arm to get the factory spring out. It's only one bolt, so that's fine. I do apologize though. I did realize halfway through pulling the spring out, my leg was blocking the shot, but that's okay. So that's the rear all done. We'll throw the back wheels on and we'll get started on the front. Alrighty, so the rear is all done. Um, it sort of looks like stock high because we've got the front on stands now, so that'll sort of balance out a bit when we lower the front. Isaac's just in the driver's seat making car noises. Um, so as far as changing front struts on these goes, you have seen me do these before, actually on this very car, when we fix the damage to the suspension and steering on the other side. So they are pretty straightforward. Um, unclip the ABS line out of that mount. Brake line, you rotate that mount. That sort of clip there. And the brake line comes out. You've got the two lower strut bolts. The lower strut bolt does hit the brake caliper bolt though. So you do need to remove the brake caliper bolt. I have mentioned before, these bolts are torque to yield as well. So they do stretch when you tighten them. Feel free to reuse them at your own risk. We have new ones in these struts. These ones have only been used once. I have found you can safely use them twice, um, but anything more than that, I would recommend replacing them. Besides from that, it's just the top nut underneath here. Hey, uh, just that nut there. Uh, and then the strut comes out. So same thing as the other side, I'm just gonna time lapse one side. Um, and yeah, we'll get it done and show you what it looks like when it's all done and on the ground. So this is the finished result of the suspension guys. We have actually just taken the car for a bit of a drive. We took it down the road and got a wheel alignment done. I'll touch on that in a second. Um, height wise, I'm really happy all in all with how it's turned out. I would have liked the back to be a tiny bit lower. So basically what I really wanted was the front to come down about 35 mil roughly and the back to come down about 45 mil. Uh, and it's come down 35 mil all around. The reason why I wanted the back to come down a bit more is because the Commodores do typically sit a little bit bum high. And as you can see, it still is sitting just that tiny bit bum high. Uh, I have contacted Pedders to see what my options are. If I wanted to go a little bit lower in the back, the next lower spring will likely lower it 25 mil lower than what it is now. And then you've got to run spaces to get it to the height that you want. I'm like, you know what? It's good enough. It's going to be more than good enough. The car feels absolutely amazing on road now. It's nice and firm. Um, turns in really, really good. So I, I, honestly, I'm really happy with it. As far as alignment goes, uh, I'm running three and a half degrees of negative camber on the front. Uh, set more caster on the front wheel so the front wheel is sitting further forward in the wheel arch than the wood from factory as you can see there is less gap on the front than the back what that basically does is it helps the steering wheel snap back to self-center quicker um, I've got uh, one mil of total toe across the front so half a mil both sides it's running two degrees of camber on the rear as well as two degrees of toe in on the rear so that's basically the back wheels are pointing in slightly to each other and what that basically does is it just helps the, the rear tires brake traction a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so that's it. So as far as suspension stuff goes, that's basically done. Um, I do want to put it on the hoist and check a couple of things, um, which I'll go through in a sec. But while it's here, the next thing I want to do, again, it's just a couple of cosmetic things, is I just want to go through and slap a bunch of stickers on this thing. So I've just got a whole bunch of stickers here, some Petters ones, white line ones, roll cage ones, AGR roll cage ones, etc. 
So I'm just gonna go through and put them on. I don't think I'll put them on the body. It'll probably just be on a window or something like that. But I'll just go through and do that quickly and I'll show you what it looks like when that's done. Did a bit of restraint with the stickers. Just did a small business sticker on the front corner of the window there. Just stuck to the quarter glass. A couple of you know parts stickers that we've been associated with and a couple of ha ha stickers as well as the big sticker on the back window that was already there and the other quarter window is the same. So yeah, so that's that, all right, onto the hoist we go. So basically all I wanna do on the car, uh, on the hoist is just basically go through and spanner check everything. So absolutely everything that we have touched on this car, I just wanna run a spanner or a socket on just to make sure everything is still nice and tight. So I'm talking everything to do with the brakes, steering, suspension, manual conversion, exhaust, like absolutely everything that we've done. We've done so much work on this thing. Um, is there's not really many bolts left underneath the car that we haven't touched so i just want to go through and spend some time and do all of that geez this suspension's looking good follows on with the theme of bolting parts of this car that are way too good for it <laughs> it's actually looking so good under here so much better than what the body of the car looks like from the, the outside but anyway um i also just want to go through and just give the blakes the brakes blakes give the brakes a quick re-bleed and I just want to check the differential oil level, make sure that's nice and full still. Likewise with the gearbox oil level, just make sure that's nice and full still. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is just change the oil on it. The oil in this engine is only a few hundred Ks old, but when we change it, I just used a um, mineral Penrite 15W40, um, which is, there's not, nothing wrong with it. It's, it's quite a good oil. Uh, but when I, in a recent video, when I did a bunch of work on my VY wagon, we we'll use the Penrite 1560 full synthetic and that operating temperature did give me a bit more oil pressure. So we're gonna throw that oil in it as well as a bottle, uh, sorry, uh, a liter of the Maury's heavy duty oil stabilizer. And I even lashed out and got a k &N oil filter. <whistles> Freaking watch it. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna go through and do all of that stuff. And then that's gonna be pretty much it, save for one more small thing. Cool beans guys, so everything underneath the car is done, all change is done as well, so that's all good. The last thing I'm just going to do to this car is I actually just want to change the battery. Um, this car didn't even have a battery in it when we got it. This is a battery that I removed from a customer's Ford Falcon that was no good, which is why I replaced it and it made its way into here, just for something temporary. That's why the um, battery terminals are the wrong way around. Commodores are supposed to have the negative on that corner and the positive on that corner. That's why the positive cable is a bit stretched. Local supplier had brand new batteries on stock, so I thought uh, on special um, ones that they had in stock. So I thought, you beauty, I'll just grab one of them. We'll throw that in. That's going to be pretty boring. You don't need to see that. And then that's pretty much going to be it. That's just about going to do this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We were able to get heaps done on the Calais in the space of a day. All of the big ticket things that I wanted to do before we take it to Calder for drifting have been done. So really, really happy all in all with how the car's turned out. Still a couple of little niggly things I want to do as well as giving the thing a tidy up, but we'll address those things a day or two before we go. If you want to see more content like this, if you are enjoying it, please remember to like and subscribe as well as follow us on our socials on Facebook and Instagram or check out our website. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you at Calder Park. If you do happen to come along and you see us in the car there please don't hesitate to come up and say hi we would absolutely love to meet you until then stay safe be good and we'll catch you soon